Thank you, thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity uh, for us to present uh, our input in terms of uh, uh, the country's effort to promote rights and reduce decent work deficits. Our country has made significant progress in promoting rights and reducing decent work deficit, particularly since the end of apartheid. The notion of a <clears throat> fundamental principle and rights at work is incorporated into, into our labor laws and policies to ensure the labor rights contribute to achieving decent work at, for all. This is done in a number of mechanisms, including first and foremost, our constitution uh, that guarantees fundamental rights to all individuals in our country, including the right to fair labor practice. Uh, this provides a framework uh, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, this provides a framework for protecting workers' rights and ensuring they are treated fairly and with dignity. Secondly, stemming from above, the South Africa, South Africa has legisl legislated socio-economic rights through the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, which borrows heavily from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In this regard, Article 22 to 26 of the Declaration of Human Rights uh, incorporating, incorporating uh, socio-economic provision, including the right to health, education, leisure, social security, and fair remuneration. Some of these issues all fall under the domain of the labor market governance. Uh, South Africa has, therefore, has comprehensive labor laws that protect rights, including laws on minimum wage, Working conditions, <coughs> working conditions and health and safety in the workplace. These laws include, amongst others, the Basic Condition of Employment Act, the Labor Relations Act, and the Employment Equity Act, and the Skills Development uh, Act. As, a, as an illustration, South Africa provides social protection to workers through social security. And all workers that work in the country are entitled to this protection, which include various forms of social insurance and social assistance. The country has also, as I've indicated already, a national minimum wage, which is set to ensure all workers earn a minimum wage. All of these laws are enforced by the Department of Employment and Labor and other relevant bodies. Thirdly, one of the mainstays of the African coordinating mechanism to ensure labor peace and stability in the economy is social dialogue, which is a crucial element of South African labor relations system. Employers, workers, and government engage in discussion and negotiate to address labor issues and promote decent work. This includes collective bargaining, which is enshrined in the law and allows workers to negotiate better wages and working conditions. Tripartism takes place at national, regional, and, and industrial levels. For example, uh, the National Economic Development Labor and Council, NETLEC, established a strong culture of strong of social dialogue in South Africa through problem solving and negotiation. The social partners cooperate on economic labor and development issues and related challenges facing the country. Firstly, South Africa has established institutions to promote decent work and protect workers' rights, such as the Commission for Conciliation and Mediation and Arbitration, CCMA, which, which provides mediation and arbitration services for labor dispute. Despite these measures, South Africa faces many challenges in achieving decent work for all. These challenges include level of unemployment. As we know, we've got a high level of unemployment. Inequality, our economy is Set and has got a problem of high inequality and informal employment in addition. South Africa faces challenges of balancing the, fund the fundamental principles and rights at work with economic growth and com competitiveness. And there's a big argument, a debate in the country about whether these rights are compatible or whether they can uh, uh, en 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 enrich each other when they are implemented. But it's a debate that is taking place, I'm sure, in many countries. The government has launched several initiatives to address these challenges, including, as I've indicated, the National Development Plan, the Decent Work Country Program, 
which aim to promote job creation, reduce inequality, and improve working conditions for all. In conclusion, our delegates believe that by promoting dialogue and cooperation, strengthening labor standard, sharing information and data, providing technical assistance, and advocating for workers' rights, BRICS member states can support each other in advancing the fundamental principle and right at work. As already stated in our capacity as chair of the BRICS labor and employment stream, we call on all BRICS to agree to a program of updating each other on their implementation of the debt and call to action on a regular basis. I thank you, Jim.